Some seasons of life pass in a blur. This past summer was one of them. Many people say the older you get, the quicker time passes. There's a few theories to this, but one I'm particularly drawn to is that for many of us, our day-to-day -day life consists of the same, usually pretty mundane tasks. The same ones we did the day before and the same ones we will do the day after. But time tends to slow down when we stray from our version of ordinary. This summer, with what seemed like just about everyone else, I took a trip to Europe and time slowed down. The trip began in Scotland. Well, really it began with a flight out of Seattle, then a layover in San Francisco, followed by a long flight to Dublin, along with a couple of drinks and a nap. And finally, one last flight that landed us in Edinburgh. Max Just hasn't tired. slept in 24 hours, so we're gonna go take a nap at the hostel. <laughs> After our long journey, we treated ourselves to showers and a couple of beers at a pub. We shared a twin bed for the night and awoke early the next morning. One of us very energized and another a bit groggy. Believe it or not, he's having fun. fun. <laughs> We're on a mission to get some bean juice. <laughs> it's approximately 6.45 in the morning. We woke up at 4.58 with... Dude, another Subaru out Energy! <laughs> Subaru's right, doing a priority. Oh. oh my gosh. With caffeine in our systems, we were off to explore the city. Less than 24 hours in beautiful Edinburgh, and we were off to the Scottish countryside for a friend's wedding. <laughs> I 
How are you doing? How am I doing? Yeah. Uh, I'm okay, I suppose. A little, a little tired? Sweaty? Um, for both. But How are you doing? <laughs> I'm okay. We have a whole nother Scot Scottish road to go and did you say it was only a mile, dude? This feels like... It's a mile, it's it like we've, we've gone over a mile already, to be honest. We have a little more to go. Uh, then we'll be there. Today, our Scottish mile is different, I guess. <laughs> One Scottish mile later, and we were settling into our new home for the weekend. Back with the ponies. Wedding attire edition. Oh, she wants you. Come here. Yeah, you want to With only one full day left in the Scottish countryside, we headed to the nearest town of St. Andrews for a wee cuppa and some sightseeing.
The very next day, we headed back to Edinburgh to catch a flight to Paris. Or so we thought. flight to Paris was cancelled, or at least delayed, overnight, so we have a hotel room in Edinburgh at the airport. But we get a free meal voucher, so I'm gonna go get some food. The flight delay ended up being a blessing in disguise as Max's cold progressed into a fever. So having a nice hotel room to sleep in for the night was just what he needed to recover. Our short night in Paris blew me away. We just biked probably an hour from our hostel to the inner city of Paris to go to the Eiffel Tower. And Max navigated us through the whole extravaganza. Yeah. It's frazzling. I'm he's, frazzled. He's still frazzled, but we made it. We're in Paris for maybe like six of our waking hours. It's beautiful. Like every street I look down, I'm just like in awe. It is beautiful. Get that. You heard it. He said it. And I agree. To the Eiffel Tower we go! Like looking at one dollar sign on Google Maps, and somehow, somehow something. Like the, 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 <laughs> you don't want to go to the hundred euro restaurant. We will definitely be back to reclaim our lost time in this beautiful city. A couple of trains later, and we were wandering the quaint cobblestone streets of Toulouse. Though I have very little footage of our time here, Toulouse proved to be one of our favorite stops on the trip. We spent most of our time sitting here by this river with what seemed like hundreds of locals and French vacationers until the late hours of the night, enjoying our bakery treats and sipping wine.
It was a very lovely way to spend our last night in France. Max amongst the pigeons. <laughs> the light actually looks awesome. Barcelona was a very different world. Bustling, hot, and lively. We moved like snails through the cobblestone streets and we took shelter in the shady alleys. Although the heat was almost suffocating, I think I can get used to life on the Mediterranean.
Portugal was a breath of fresh air. We escaped the city life, cruising north along the golden beaches and rocky bluffs bordering the Atlantic. By some miracle, we found this place, very last minute, a paradise of a homestead tucked between dozens of farms down a long dusty road. felt so very at home here. We went to Lisbon. We had plans to stay there, but decided to leave. We were sick of the city life and found a really, really cool Airbnb in or near Santa Cruz, uh, Portugal. There's dogs. <laughs> Number one, there is dogs. Three of them. Yeah. 
Nina, Lima, and Pamilia? Something like that. Mm -hmm. I only know Nina. I'm just kidding, I know Nina. but <laughs> Nina's my fave. We couldn't find this place for a while. We were getting worried it was fake or something. <laughs> yeah. Because we were just driving up and down the area where it was supposed to be and couldn't find anything. Uh, I don't think the Portuguese are very friendly with Google Maps. I don't think Google Maps is is a Portuguese thing. Because it seems like every time we put something into Google Maps in this country, it just goes somewhere random where that location is not. Stoked. Mm. And what are we doing today? I know, we're hopefully getting up off our butts and going to find a beach because it's already Oh, long. let's go. Yeah. We better get going. Almost. Cars. Most of our days were spent surfing and lounging on the beach, soaking in the hot sunlight with sunscreen applied. Very thick for me. We did dip back into Lisbon for an evening sailboat tour, where we enjoyed some more drinks, of course, and watched the cityscape glow against the pastel sunset as fellow sailboats and dolphins cruised by. These last few days we spent in Portugal and on our great European adventure, I felt a mix of intense joy, gratitude, exhaustion, and an equal longing for home, but desire to never leave. We were only traveling for a little over two weeks, but it felt as if we were away for a month. Time really does slow down when we stray away from our version of ordinary. And I strive to make a life of slowing time down.
No, I don't like it. We're in Ireland. Look at the Americans. We may be. Hey, buddy. Oh, the video? All right, we out here. We're doing a scavenger hunt, not really, but we're about to pet some ponies. That's the most important thing. <laughs> We've abandoned the scavenger hunt. Yeah. We helped. I mean, we abandoned it the moment we heard ponies you know, <laughs> and they were real. I had double checked before. But they were real and they are. So, so. we're going to go pet them and feed them the carrots I yeah, bought. We got carrots. Ponies because love carrots. I always bring carrots almost wherever <laughs> I go. <laughs> well, this is crazy. Look at the view. Wow. Man, wow. the new iPhone cameras are nice. This isn't even the newest iPhone. This yeah, is back in their day. <laughs> but wow, that's basically a castle, kind of. Very grateful for life right now. You are like an animal whisperer. <laughs> All right. Thanks for hanging out with us. That was super sweet. I know you just did it for the carrots, but... Are you vlogging? <laughs> yeah. Hey everyone, That's... it's Kira's turn. <laughs> Max is sick like three days ago, and now I am. So I just wanted to... I don't know. Show the reality of, of life right now. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I really enjoy breakfast in Europe. <laughs> 